All right, gang. Uh, on your radar, you have to start thinking about these mathematics, mathematics education journals. Uh, the one that I refer to the most is the Journal for Research in Mathematics Education. Uh, it's through the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Uh, it is good stuff. Uh, another one uh, I'm not as familiar with uh, is the Mathematics Education Research Journal. Uh, I've, I've, I've cited things from uh, that journal. Uh, it's, it, it, it's good. Uh, Primus uh, through uh, AMS, the American Mathematical Society, uh, also a very, very good journal. Uh, in fact, I'm doing uh, some stuff on college placement right now, uh, something that you guys may, uh, may be interested in uh, considering for your, uh, for your master's thesis. But uh, anyway, there have been a couple of really cool articles recently on... Uh, on uh, you know approach to to getting students in their uh, uh, in the appropriate uh, uh, first uh, math class in college, uh, guys. The uh, Journal of Mathematics Teacher Education. I'm not as familiar with that. Uh, I've been told that there's some pretty good stuff there. Uh, the College uh, Mathematics Journal and Math Horizons through MAA. These are probably less research uh, focus. So, uh, they're probably not going to help you as much in in in, in the the goals of uh, of your of your research project, but I put that uh, I just put them there because you know sometimes you can read things like this uh, in, in, to get some ideas even though they may may not present research. Uh, Math Horizons has uh, all kinds of cool activities, um, and you know maybe you can look at an activity and think eh, how could that be. Uh, used in the context uh, that, that we're uh, seeking in this class. So, uh, for the most part, you probably focus on the first three: the Journal for Research in Mathematics Education, uh, Mathematics Education Research Journal, and uh, Primus. Okay. Now, introduction. Uh, you know, how do we know when something is true? Uh, how do we know? Uh, uh, you know something, and uh, we we t we typically define knowledge as a justifiable uh, belief uh, or a justified true belief. I want you to start thinking about, you know, how are educators, um, uh, how, what does that say? How are educators to know? Oh, okay. How are they to know what is true, uh, and how do we acquire reliable information? I'm always reminded of a quote by Einstein. It was one of the uh, final books written on his life, and he was being interviewed for this book. And uh, they asked uh, Dr. Einstein, in his opinion, what was the difference between uh, people of average intelligence and people of, you know, at, at kind of his level. Because uh, it was clear throughout his, his experiences, he had, he had worked with a lot of people of... Uh, uh, you know, uh, relatively high uh, uh, intelligence. Uh, he thought for a second, and what he came back with was uh, quite unique in uh, uh, typical Einstein fashion. He said, you know, the people I work with of higher intelligence tend to say, I don't know more often. And you kind of think uh, it'd just be the opposite. People with high intelligence, you think that they have the answers to all the problems. But it doesn't work that way. I think as, as I've become, through my education, I think I've become, uh, you know, a little smarter, if you, if you will. Uh, and I think one of the hurdles to getting over that uh, kind of, I don't know, kind of becoming a little more intelligent, I, I kind of hate that phrase, but uh, is just being able to realize and, uh, and appreciate and, uh, and uh, uh, accept what I don't know. Uh, just because I think something doesn't make it knowledge. Uh, just because I've lived something doesn't necessarily make it true. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, we'll, and we'll talk about that in just a, just a second a little bit more uh, about experience and authority. So speaking of, uh, there are many sources of knowledge. Uh, we acquire knowledge through experience, and sometimes we, uh, uh, we try to acquire knowledge through authority. Um, but uh, what I want you to focus on in this class is scientific inquiry. Uh, and I think uh, we're going to, hopefully by the end of the class, we all agree that scientific inquiry uh, into education problems provides the most valuable source of knowledge um, to educators for decision making. Um, 
I can tell you firsthand, educators aren't always influenced, nor do they stop to consider uh, the results of carefully planned research. Uh, some of my most respected colleagues uh, at Shawnee State University could care less about what the research says. Uh, they rely totally on experience and from authority, uh, you know, what they've been told uh, to be true in the past. So I want to address that. Uh, you know, what, what, what happens with experience? Uh, well, as I say, their experience is a, is a, a familiar and well-used source of knowledge. Uh, you know, through personal experience, we can find the answers to many questions we face. Uh, a simple example that comes to mind for me is uh, when I drive to Portsmouth, uh, there are many, many, many routes that I could take. Uh, in fact, I can sit here and think of about 10 routes and not even really give it much thought. Well, I like to take the most effective route. Now, does that mean the quickest? Eh, eh, possibly. Uh, does it mean the safest? Well, yeah, that, that's also uh, a situation. So over the 20 years that I've been at Shawnee, I can use my experience from, and I've actually got from all the 10 kind of possible routes, I've got it down to four reasonable routes, through my personal experience, I've kind of answered my question on which one of these routes seems most reasonable and is the best for me. Uh, now, second uh, quote there, much wisdom is passed from generation to generation via experience. For example, uh, if someone uh, uh, from my hometown would happen to uh, uh, to take a job at Shawnee State University, probably not very likely, but if this happened, I would share my experiences with them. Uh, and of course the final bullet, learning from experience is a prime characteristic of intelligent behavior. Uh, I think it would be um, uh, advantageous and intelligent, if you will, uh, to, to share uh, this with uh, uh, other people in similar situations. Limitations. People are different. Uh, so how they're affected by an event may be different. Uh, I'm uh, kind of uh, reminded of a situation where uh, a respected colleague of mine, uh, we uh, were uh, observing a student teacher. And uh, I observed the student teacher on one day, and about a week later, uh, my other, my colleague, uh, went and observed the teacher. And uh, we met and we shared our beliefs well, I thought this was a very, very good teacher, and my colleague thought that this person was a horrible teacher. So it was, uh, you know, we were both very experienced. Uh, we both really uh, shared a lot of common views on what uh, was good teaching and bad teaching, but it was, it was really strange on how we felt uh, so differently um, about this person's uh, approach toward teaching. Uh, I'll give a little uh, quote there. I said, a delightful sanctuary to one person, maybe a, a menacing wilderness to another. I stole that from somebody. I'm sure I wasn't clever enough to come up with that one, but uh, it's something I've stored in my trash can of useless information. And uh, guys, quite frankly, many times <clears throat> you need to know things that just simply cannot be uh, learned through experience. Uh, another uh, source that we uh, rely on is uh, authority. Uh, and we look for people who have an expertise uh, to, to kind of lend us a source of uh, uh, providing the truth. Um, you know, uh, this is, um, I, I, I probably shouldn't even tell you this story because it makes me look like an idiot. But I remember in graduate school one time, this is, in my, this is actually my PhD program, we were talking about, uh, just casually, this was actually before class, we were talking about whether, where algebra should be brought into the curriculum. And at that time, and even today, slightly, I feel that we bring algebra into the curriculum too early. Now, I think there are tons of stuff we could do at the 7th and 8th grade uh, in terms of problem solving and getting students to, to explore and uh, becoming, you know, arithmetically sound, which I don't think students are arithmetically sound. Um, I think we try to get them into the big boy, big girl stuff as quickly as possible when there's a part of me that thinks if we were just a little bit more patient with that and built a better foundation of arithmetic, 
and reasoning and logic and thought and problem solving and those kinds of things that we would build uh, uh, we would not be building a house on sand so to speak now do I know that to be true no that's just an opinion but we were sitting around talking about something like this uh, before class one day and the people there completely disagreed with me well I played the authority card and at that time I'd been teaching a long time I had taught more math than all of the other people had taught put together and I played that card and uh, my professor who was there made me feel like a complete idiot I was pissed off at him the whole drive home I was thinking you SOB you know uh, but you know as I reflect on that today he was right just because I had taught more math than everyone else in that room did that really make me an authority well yeah it kind of did make me an authority but it didn't did it mean I knew everything <clears throat> no it actually didn't uh, and instead of me sitting there presenting my facts as an authority and, and supposedly uh, to be uh, assumed and um, uh, received as knowledge, I should have just said, well, at my opinion is this. It has limitations on authority. Uh, first of all, how do we know the experts know what they're talking about? Uh, that's something that you run into a lot. Um, uh, experts can be wrong. And the third bullet there, authorities disagree. Uh, my doctoral advisor uh, was uh, the statistics uh, director for SIMS and TIMS, which is the second and third international mathematics study. And he told the story many, many times about he and uh, I think there were 19 other people on the statistics committee. And none of them could agree. They couldn't come to uh, a consensus on how they were going to uh, conduct, uh, well, this is lovely. Huh, for some reason, uh, all right, well, Tanya's Fitbit <laughs> uh, update came up and it had to be more important than what I'm doing here. So. But anyway, uh, he talked about there being 20, uh, people on the uh, statistics uh, committee and uh, they met and met and met and he said you know about 1.2 million dollars later they still hadn't come up with a way to, uh, uh, to to analyze the data that they all agreed on so ultimately what ended up happening is he and one other person uh, met kind of privately came up with the plan and that's what they used so guys authorities disagree uh, and if you ever sit into <laughs> sit in a uh, department meeting uh, for the uh, Department of Mathematics at Shawnee State Univers University, uh, you'll see evidence of that, and you, and you probably see it in your own uh, department meetings. Uh, guys, authority is closely related to custom and tradition. Uh, custom is something I find extremely interesting. Uh, tradition as well. Uh, you know, how have things been done in the past? That tends to be uh, a driving force bet between uh, or in, in the process of uh, deciding what's, what's knowledge, what's to be accepted. The problem with this is uh, in the examination of the history of education, uh, many traditions that prevailed for years were later uh, shown to be uh, uh, slightly ridiculous. Uh, one that comes to mind there, I don't know if any of you remember the dunce cap. If you did something silly in class, you'd have to go over and stand in a quarter and put the dunce cap on, you know, and it was supposed to some way psychologically motivate students to do better well you know research shows a little bit later on that that's ridiculous and that did nothing uh, more than just uh, humiliate uh, most students uh, and separate them from the learning process uh, I even had a student or I'm sorry a teacher one time I think second third uh, grade that if you did anything wrong uh, she would go over and draw a circle on the on the wall and You'd have to go over there and stand so long with your nose in a circle. Uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, uh, education at its best via authority. Uh, 